So why do we care about the triple scalar product? Well, you know how the, the cross product was good for finding the error of a parallelogram with adjacent sides, whatever vectors you're looking at? It, it turns out that the triple scalar product, if you, as long as you take the absolute value, because it could, be, it could be negative, as long as you take the absolute value of the triple scalar product with adjacent sides u, v, and w, you can get the volume of the associated parallel pipid. What's a parallel pipid? Well, op, you know, opposite sides are parallel, but it, it, and it's like a box. So a, a regular upright box could be a, is a parallel pipe, but it could also be like tilted. Yeah, that's a parallel pipe. And I, I drew it here ahead of time because drawing it freehand is no fun at all. So these dotted lines are supposed to be the it's supposed to be the part in back, the back corner of this tilted box. So this picture that I've drawn um, has adjacent sides. The the U the U side is going up. So that's, we think of that edge as one vector. Then V is this front edge on the bottom. W is this back edge right here. So I feel like I should prove that the volume of this thing is going to be the absolute value of the triple scalar product. I know you don't feel like it's necessary, but I would feel bad. I couldn't sleep tonight if I didn't. So how do we do that? Well, we do have to take one thing on faith that the... Um, Volume would be the area of the base. So the, what, what's the base? Kind of this flat part right here, right? Could be flat, doesn't have to be. I mean, okay, it's planar, but it doesn't have to lie horizontal is what I'm just saying. It is flat. So the area of that thing times, what do you think? The volume will be the area of that base times, what do you think? The height, yeah. So... We're going to use that formula here. So the volume V is going to be the area of the base times the height. OK, I claim we know the area of that base. So the area, uh, I erased it, but if I do it again, the area of that base that base is what kind of object? Well, the boundary of that base is what kind of object? Parallelogram, right? With what adjacent sides? V and W. So what's the area of a parallelogram with adjacent sides V and W? Well, you got to put in the magnitude. Otherwise, it's a vector, right? That's something you got to get used to. It, it, it's hard to get used to that, actually. It's really easy to leave these magnitude bars off. But it's really not the same thing if you don't include them. So magnitude of V cross W, from what we talked about earlier, is the area of that base that I indicated in red right there. OK, the height. Well, we're going to need another vector here. So This vector, how could we, con uh, I'm a, I don't have to draw out the exact length of the, of the height. In order to find the height of this thing, we need a vector that's perpendicular to the plane of that floor, right? Of, of, that, of, that, v cro of, that, of that, that, that parallelogram defined by V and W, right? We, in other words, we need this vector in red to be perpendicular to both V and W. And then the idea is to project U onto that vector, if we can find it, and then that length from there to there, from the floor to here, will be the height that we need. Does that seem reasonable? In order to do the homework, you're going to have to be able to draw pictures like this. They don't have to be works of art, but they have to be good enough that you can tell what's going on and what you need. Does that picture make sense to you? Well, I mean, there's one thing we talked about today that, that works here, one operation that will give us a vector that's perpendicular to both U and, or actually, in this case, V and W. That is cross product. So this vector in red here could be thought of as the cross product. It could also be any multiple of the cross product. Remember, because if you take a multiple of a vector, it, it's parallel to... Um, the vector you started with, but there's no reason to 
multiply it by anything. So V cross W will be perpendicular to both V and W. Okay, so this length here is the, per well, that's not gonna be enough room. So let me move this guy, no. Let me move that guy over. Okay, now I have enough room. So this guy here then is gonna be the projection, this height is gonna be the projection of what onto what? This guy, this guy in green is U. So the projection of U onto V cross W. Does everybody see that? That's not actually the height. What do I have to do to it? I have to take its magnitude. Yeah, because projection, the projection is actually a vector. So that's H for height, H, H for height. So that's what I'm going to put in here. Magnitude of the projection of U onto V cross W. And so to, to finish off the verification here, we just have to show that the projection of U, magnitude of the projection of U onto V cross W times magnitude of V cross W is going to be that, that triple scalar product, the absolute value of that anyway. Okay, we have to use the right formulas here. So I need, it's, it was only the other day that I showed you this formula. The projection of U onto V, you probably don't have memorized yet, right? It's U dotted with V, kind of looks like the cosine formula a little bit for uh, the angle, but on the bottom it becomes the magnitude of V squared. And then you multiply it times V, the project, the Scalar, so this is a scalar, so it's a scalar multiplication times V, a vector um, that you're projecting onto. That's the formula that we developed the other day. Now we have to write down that formula in terms of the projection of U onto V cross W. So uh, the, v cr the, the V in this formula is replaced with V cross W. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we're going to put absolute, or magnitude bars around it. So here we go. Magnitude of V cross W. Uh, that, that hasn't changed. That's the area of the base. And then what, what, okay, then other, more magnitude bars. What does this guy become based on this formula? You, okay, start with U dotted with what? U dotted with, we better use parentheses, V cross W over, v cross w squared. yeah, good, magnitude of V cross W squared we need. That's the, like the v, magnitude V squared here. And then what goes um, out in front of it? That's a, this, a, uh, I shouldn't use a dot here. It's regular multiplication because this is a scalar. Times, not V, but v cross w. we're projecting onto the vector V cross W, so that's what that has to be. And then we have to close the magnitude bars because we're actually taking the magnitude of that thing. Every, everybody with me so far? So what is a scalar here? So we, okay, this is kind of a mess on, for your eyes. So focus on this piece. Inside those, those magnitude bars, uh, inside the, the encircled uh, area in red, what part is a scalar? Because we can pull scalars out of magnitude bars. So uh, this denominator down here is a scalar. It's the magnitude of V cross W squared. And the numerator is a scalar as well, isn't it? Yeah? Now, you have to be careful. That dot product could be negative, so you gotta, when you pull it out, you've got to put absolute values around it. Okay? And then everything's going to cancel nicely. So we have the magnitude V cross W. Okay, so I'm pulling out uh, the constant indicated in, in yellow here, or in between the, encircled in yellow anyway. Um, I'll put, a, the, the big bar is, is absolute value because it's a scalar that, that we're pulling out. So u dot v, absolute value, u dot v cross w, divided by, oh, I don't need to make them that big though because I just really, the, the absolute value splits up over division and the magnitude of V cross W is automatically positive, assuming non-zero sides here. 
So I don't need it around the bottom. So I just pulled that guy out that's encircled in yellow. And then inside the, the magnitude bars, I still have V cross W, right? So we're hoping all the magnitudes of V cross W cancel, do they? That's supposed to be a W right there. They do. Look, this guy cancels with one of these. This guy cancels with the remaining one. You're left with the absolute value of, oh, I should have parentheses there, of U dotted with V cross W, which is what we wanted. 